Good morning. Welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and we take literal junk, things that we have for free, leftovers, things that we want to waste not, so we want not. And uh, we turn it into home decor that we sell or keep. A lot of things we sell at jamierayvintage.com, um, and we just show you guys how to make use of old stuff. So this wood isn't technically old, but it is leftover. We have a whole line of cutting boards that we make with different cute animals. See the sheep in the background? But <laughs> we have to have like a certain size board to cut two at a time. And so we always have these odds and ends, leftover ends. Sometimes they have a big knot in them. Or one had a big split. One had a big end. split. And so we can't use them on our CNC machine. And so Zeb saves all of those boards. And I asked him this morning, I said, would you please make some boards um, based off of your designs? Because recently so when we, we went, went to England. Yes, when we went to England, I saw cutting boards all over. And some of them were in antique stores and they were way out of my price range that I felt comfortable flying them home. But I, uh, you know, I took a bunch of Not measurements fine. and well, mostly just eyeballed, but I got some fun shapes and I kind of incorporated them. You can see here, I really loved this one here, and that inspired this design. Um, this handle I loved, so we've got that on this big board. So just, just lots of fun inspiration that we wanted to put into action. These are all one of a kind. We, Zeb doesn't necessarily love to make stuff over and over again until he gets programmed, so... These are going to be one of a kinds for a hot minute. Um, if you are on Facebook, if you wouldn't mind hitting out that little share button and sharing to your page, it helps us out a ton. Um, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and a like because that lets both Facebook and YouTube know that, hey, these people aren't so bad after all. Let's share their video. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we're doing today is we're going to give these kind of like an old age look. We're probably going to break out the... Uh, the kitchen knife and do some cut marks on them. They will be food safe. Um, hey, that's loud. Sorry. Where's your mic? <laughs> Where's my mic? Oh, it's underneath, it's underneath the milk the paint. Milk paint. Um, so this hemp oil is all natural, food safe. Here, maybe let me do that. You want to do that? I feel like you're going to cut yourself and me. I, I feel like I have some pent up anguish to get out. And this, uh, the milk paint that we're going to use to tint the uh, the hemp oil is also bio certified food safe with the uh, FDA, right? It? Yeah, it's bio certified. So the only paint that we carry that is bio certified food safe doesn't mean the other stuff we carry isn't food safe. It's just not certified. Um, is the milk paint and the hemp oil, both of which we carry at jamierayvintage.com. I'm going to have Caitlin drop links. She might not be on here for a hot minute, but she will drop them eventually. Or you can just type in jamierayvintage.com and you can search milk paint and it'll all come up or hemp oil. Important to note, my mother felt the need to spell my name without an E. So J-A-M-I-R-A-Y. <laughs> we get a lot of people are like, I tried to find you, but I couldn't. And to add, make matters worse, she made my middle a name Elaine. So whenever I have to give my name, I'm like, Jamie, no E, middle initial E. And they're like, what? <laughs> Anyways, it's, I'm just going to age this while he shows you all the styles. So this style is probably one of my favorites. And it's looking pretty bright on camera, but it, I don't know if you guys can tell. It had a live edge, which is why it didn't make the CNC cut. Careful. Hey, can you that over there? Yeah, I feel like <laughs> you're about to have some surgery. Um, but it's great for something like this where I just cut one out and I'm done. And this top piece, I hadn't seen that anywhere, but saw one in an antique store like this. Usually it's rounded more um, here in the U.S. or it's just like a little uh, little um, ball on the top and really like that. But left the live edge on here, had a big chink out of the wood here that I uh, sanded down smooth. So Jamie's over here cutting. And the reason she's doing this is because when we do this hemp oil, that's going to sit down in all those little cracks when we color it with the milk paint. And it, you'll, it'll pick up. You'll be able to see that. Tell them about the edges because you gave these edges a special treatment, which when you are making cutting boards, if you want them to look old, if you don't do this, you could age them all you want and they're still going to look new. So anytime you get new lumber from the lumber store, it's plain down with a crisp, sharp edge. And I spent quite a bit of time with the 60 grit sander rounding these. 
And I just take the sander, right? Like the flat of the sander, we use a random orbital and I just roll it. I don't, I don't sit here and go like this on the side. I roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Cause that kind of simulates, we had a board here, but I think we actually sold the England board that we brought back. Oh yeah. Um, but it, it wasn't like ultra crisp, but it still had a defined edge. It wasn't completely muddled and just gone. Well, and I wanted to, um, I wanted to buy a bunch of breadboards in England, but we found exactly one and it wasn't even anything that was like super special. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make it as we have wood. So let me show you guys this. Cause this is cool. This is some copper pipe out of the church that we're doing the, the renovation on for our shop. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> is this noise annoying guys? Sorry. And you can still see it's half inch copper pipe there, but this is the inside of it. And I cut it open with my grinder and left some of the patina on here. We might use that up on a handle or something, you know, cur curve it around a handle or, or put it up over here. I've got a, I still got a, um, doctor up those edges so they're not super sharp but i was thinking that might be cool too and these are just the water pipes that are out of the church yeah so we're saving all the copper water pipes um and making use of them too so that's a good way to reclaim copper and look at the like that patina is you know yeah that's you can't it's the best um looks like maple so this is pine and this is poplar poplar so maple is very close this is a very light poplar um so you can see here this one's a little darker a lot of the old cutting boards, though, were pine um, that we saw. Yeah, it was an easy wood to work with. It was cheap, and they were using hand tools. I actually used quite a few hand tools this morning. Um, I used my, my half-round rasp, uh, or this is a file, but I also have a rasp. But I used this to kind of refine the edge a little bit. And I hand chiseled this out because I wanted it to look organic. Normally, I would just take a drill on each end and have it be nice and uh, clean on the end and then just take the jigsaw and cut in between those two holes with the drill but i wanted this to be a little more organic and when we do the uh let's see if it'll pick it up so you can still see it's got like some chips and things i didn't sand it ultra smooth and it's got some imperfections it's not completely round but it is big enough to fit four of my fingers in through there and uh, I figured either it'd be good for hanging or, you know, just grabbing it and and uh, you can even do like a little display. I think I almost I think you really, got enough. I'll pretend I'm cutting something. I mean, it takes a long time. This is this is our sheep cutting board that is probably a little dirty because Jamie uses one side and then she puts it up and then she uses the other side and then she washes it. But look at all the cut marks on this. And this is probably about a year, year and a half of use. And yes, it is a little grungy right now. <laughs> it's got the perfect patina. It's, it looks like you chopped mushrooms it's on It's the this. perfect size for mushrooms and strawberries and lemons. But that's, that's what we're going for is all these cut marks. Don't worry, I'm almost done with this one cutting board. And then I'll pass it to Zeb. He's going to show you how to finish them. But once you like put the stuff on there, I feel like it's done. You know what else I was thinking? I'm not pointing this towards you. I just, can you hold it regular though? I feel like, like this. Yes. <laughs> I have more strength like this though. I'm trying to get deep grooves. Oh, in here. okay. Um, I was thinking we might, when we're all done, let's do a wash with the different colors of milk paint that we have. And then let's put some flour sack in the hemp oil to give it an oxidized look. And that will sit down into all these amazing lines that I made. So you want to do like the darker color and then the lighter color. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do the darker color and the oil. I just want to do that straight up water and milk paint, water it down, make a faux stain. And then we'll do hemp oil and flour sack, which we have a whole bag oh, of flour brand sack. Brand new whisk. Our other whisk is looking sad. Yeah. If you guys need a whisk for your milk paint, we sell these. I think they're like $3.95. Um, and you have to spend over 10 bucks to get free shipping on the milk paint whisks on the website, but, uh, they're handy. And ours has held up through many, uh, abuses and finally died because Zeb used it to mix up some plaster of Paris. Cause we're doing some molding of something we bought in England and he left it in the plaster of Paris and it was not coming out. <laughs> we are going to have all of these, uh, 
for sale, but they will only be just these ones, just however we finish them. We're not making any extras at this point because we're busy at the church. Um, and we probably will do some, I'm not going to do all of them with cuts. We'll show you what they look like both ways, but they will be live about 30 minutes after our live video today. I will have them up and ready to go. And then the next time we do a batch, we'll let you guys know. Zeb is, right. Zeb's not a fan of the mass production. He just likes to do a few at a time. You know, it, it kind of kills your creativity. Like you do this one thing, it's awesome. And then you, ha and then when you, when you sell, like we do, you got to do a bunch of them. Um, or take them to a market or whatever. And by the time you're done doing like 10, you're like, wow, that that's no longer creative. It killed all my, my fun. <laughs> yeah. So, so these, we like to come out with new designs a lot. And they're, they're just hard to find authentic ones. So we're going to just make our own reclaimed authentic ones. All right. So this is the hemp oil with the, the suitcase. Yeah, I'll try that one. Oh, I was going to have you do it not with oil, just with the water and then the oil with the white. Oh, okay. I, well, I we think can, I went through that whole spiel. I missed the oil part. I thought you were going to do like a wash with water over. But no, because you can't do you can't do oil and water like that. It doesn't mix. Gotcha. Okay. It's cool. It just, makes sense. Just I'll make another batch. It's fine. Just start with that one on this one, and then we'll go from there. Oh, that's kind of rough, though. I need uh, to. Yeah, where's the sandpaper? I need to get a little bit. But what of about your rasp? Can you just use that on no, there? No, that's not gonna. I'll get some sandpaper okay. real quick. <laughs> Um, I love making cutting board, especially handles use old spindles. That is totally fun. Yeah. Our goal though, sometimes people do reclaim cutting boards and they're cute, but they're not necessarily like functional. So we do both kinds, but we try really hard to make them actual cutting boards that can be used, not just for decor. Um, in our own home, I have an Ikea cutting board and I really need to, Zeb has some wood in the basement saved from when we reclaim, like took everything down in our house. And so someday I'll actually get him to sand that, our wood. Look down in the basement Yeah, we saved for me. Yep. <laughs> we made a bunch and All we have them. to do is like sand the edges and then we can finish those ones. Is it possible to put a transfer on then seal for to be food safe? Here's the thing. Like you could, but you're never going to be able to put a transfer on and then actually use it so it doesn't need to be food safe because a transfer is not made to be washed, submerged in water, cut with a knife. So if I was going to put a transfer on one, I would just put a transfer on it, seal it however you want because it's ultimately only ever going to be used for decor. You could, pro tip, you could put a transfer on it, seal it with what you want, then on the opposite side, make that food safe so people could use the one side for decor and when they're ready to cut, they could just flip it over and use the other side for food. That's what I would do. I think that would make the most sense. Um, what would you use all, what would, what would do you use for cutting boards? Okay, so we use whatever wood we can find, which generally is pine or um, poplar. We sometimes use hardwood, but Unless we can find reclaimed hardwood, it's not cost effective. It's super, super. The expensive. only white I could find was when we did from when we did the floor. So. Kathleen says bingo. <laughs> I told him I said if you want to do a transfer, just do a transfer on one side and seal it with whatever you want, and then make the opposite side food safe. So one side, it's like a mullet for a cutting board. So what I would do if I party did, in the front, business in the back. It what was I would the opposite do if I mullet. did that is I would do like an epoxy over the top of it, and then you could wash it and cut on the top and whatever until it wore out. That sounds like a pain in the butt. Just seal it with whatever and make the other side food safe. Okay. Because here's the thing, if you cut on the epoxy over the top of a transfer. Well, it also helped it hold up if you were washing it too. Yeah, but I think too, like, it, I don't know how well the transfer would hold up because of the off-gassing of the epoxy. All right, this is flour sack and I'm using a, a heaping tablespoon. That's a lot, that's like a fourth cup. Well, we got a lot of boards. Warm water in your milk paint. Veronica says, I have so many, and then she also just uses a plate. <laughs> Kai said, taking the stone fireplace out of the church broke my heart, but we've got a plan, and we're anxious to see it all. So here's the thing. I don't think, I mean, maybe you would have well liked it in real life, but it was not... It was not the kind of stone you generally would use on a fireplace. It was like sharp landscape stone. landscaping stone. Like think 1985 to 1995, like that ugly flagstone. And so if somebody fell on it, they would hurt themselves. Plus it took up a huge amount of real estate on really our fireplace. It was really dusty too. Like 
caked yeah. on like oh, yeah. kitchen for dust. So I we have a video coming out Friday of us taking that down and we're going to show you where we're going to put the garden and what we're going to do with that. Um, but it's much better to be the outside. video will show you like it's I give you some nice close ups and most of you that are like uh, we're like, oh, hey, don't take it out. I think you're going to be on our side. There's brick behind it. And our plan in the church is to um, put up a big mantle and make a fireplace where it was. Um, it will not be working because I think originally it was just like a um, what are those called stove, like a wood stove. Yeah. Um, and we would never use that in a retail space because it's just not, it gets too hot. Sometimes they stink. You stub your toe. Like it just doesn't make well, sense, but we'll make something cute. up there on the stage. We don't want all the clothing to smell like a campfire. Yeah. All right. Are we ready to get started? Did you get a rag to apply this? No, but we're doing dark first. So did you make me a dark? Oh, you just wanted. Did you mix this with water? Yeah, I'm okay. having a struggle. <laughs> it's going to be a fun day, guys. <laughs> Here, all right, just ignore that. Ignore it. <laughs> the way this goes is you mix the milk paint, just a little sample. You don't need much, like eight parts water to one part milk paint. And we're going to put that on first. Then we're going to take the white and mix it with hemp oil, not water. So we're just going to move these. Both of those, get them out of here. Yeah. We'll use them on a different project. And we're going to go over the top with that to seal it and oxidize it. So I'm going to stop being distracted and I'm going to keep my handy... Partner. I was thinking about the fireplace Focused. and I'm like, you know, water, milk, hemp oil, you know, it's all it's fine. All right, there you go. All right, <laughs> put some of that on there. Uh, the church is just going to be one level for retail. We have three levels on the other side, but that doesn't work for a retail space. Oh, thank you, Odelia. Uh, we need a couple. Can you find us more? Okay, so this is suitcase, which is like a chocolatey brown. And we're going to get it on here. And you're going to see why all those cuts were important. And I think we're going to need, can you put more suitcase in there? I need it to be a little darker. A little darker? Yes. We also have zinc out. They're both like, this is like a brownish gray and zinc is a, like a dark gray. So you're going to start seeing those cuts. Can you see them in there? I'll yeah. Bring it. Can, I don't know. You can, but when we make it darker, you'll be able to see it better. We're pre-aging these for you. You know, you can use them for decor, but they're going to be 100% functional. The products we're using are fine. So the church does have a basement. That's just where our wholesale papers and... <laughs> he is throwing stuff off camera. It's, oh, okay. I'll get in a minute. Just throw it. Are you afraid people will see oh, you? No. She's in her pajamas. It's okay. You're fine. You're cute, even in your PJs. Also, speaking of cute, today's the best day ever. Do you know why? Why? Because I woke up with, I went to bed with wet hair and I woke up and it wasn't all crazy. Like a good natural hair day is like a dream come true for me. I think it's because Mariah just cut it. So I don't have all the crazy split ends. Oh, this is better. All right. We're going to keep putting this on here, layering it. It's better to start light and layer it on because you can't, you can't really go light, lighter from darker, but you can go darker from lighter. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the deep cuts are the best. So I'm, get down in there. Don't worry. I think mine are all deeper than yours. Well, you're also strong. <laughs> you're also stronger than me. I wonder if we should put some gray over the top of this. You think? Um, no, I think it'll be fine. It kind of get get a little orangey, but I think if you do the wash, it'll be it'll be okay. Okay. And that one's pine. That board there is pine. All right. So these these poplar ones are uh, four quarters or one inch. Is how I get them from the lumber store. And then this pine is playing down to three quarters of an inch. They'll still tell you it's one by at the, the hardware store, but it's plain. So just know that the actual size of it is three quarters. If you're trying to do this yourself, go to like a specialty lumber store and get the full four quarter, one inch if you want that. Uh, Distressed Starlin says you should get a Revlon hot hair dryer. I actually have one. I actually hate blow drying my hair, but I do have one of those and it does work. Um, I'm pretty low maintenance when it comes to looks. I know it seems shocking because I had fake eyelashes for three years, but that was like the extent that, of that. That helped with her low maintenance. She didn't have to do her eyelashes. Yeah. And I do um, go get like uh, facial, facial peels and Botox and stuff like that, but I should just close that it's like you're supposed to do it every three months or something, and I go like twice a year, sometimes three times a year. They're like, um, you were supposed to come in. I'm like, listen, Linda, I was busy. And then every now and then I'm like, okay, it's time. I feel like I got to get my curled fingers out. So, you know. Yeah, don't chop any fingers off or just move your hand. My hold. hand is out of the way. 
It's way away. I mean, I'm offering advice when clearly I was not the perfect. Jamie's mom didn't let her use a knife in the kitchen probably till like we were almost getting married. I don't want to get, so, I got a, I got a new black sheep of the family shirt and I don't want to get paint on it. Her, uh, her knife cutting skills are, are still affected by that. Also, I didn't eat meat when I was in high school. So like me cutting meat is hilarious. Zeb still cuts my meat. <laughs> So I'm not very good at it. All right, I think I want to do a darker color on this. All right, I think I, I think that's good. Nice, Stacy. Where are we located? So we're located in Lehigh, Utah, and we also are located at JamieRayVintage.com. I would say a majority of our business, I could say with 100% of surety, is online. We probably do. 15 to one or 20 to one online to in-store sales. We're hoping to change that when we move to the church, but we mostly, because we, we spend most of our time making videos and stuff. That's just where our customer base is. Random question. Why were the live chats not coming up after the last two, three lives? I don't know, Virginia. They, maybe they are now. Sometimes it takes a minute. Leah says she loves foods, uh, food scissors. <laughs> Are I, great. I feel that. Uh, Stephanie Mahalan on Facebook. You two are my new faves. Thank you. We have lots of new friends on Facebook because Facebook has been showing us all the love and pushing our stuff out. We're, we're getting way more views on Facebook than we are on YouTube these days. YouTube, are you listening? Are you listening, YouTube? Um, <laughs> we actually recently hit 100,000 followers on Facebook, which yeah, is we, crazy. It happened while we were in England, so we got we to we do some sort of celebration. We I haven't figured out what well, we're, we're going to do. We were talking maybe when we get in the church. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I need that when you're done because I'm going to do, I made this darker. Oh, you made it even more, more dark. Um, Caitlin, while Seb is doing that, would you mind sharing out the link to our quarterly craft kits? So we, these are selling like hotcakes. We are limiting them to 200 because we have ordered 200 paint brushes, the round paint brushes. You're going to get one with every craft kit. Um, and then we're also going to send you a bunch of different paint so that way you can pick and choose how you layer this on. Um, and we will do a video to show you how to make this look like an old Swedish rocking horse. So if you have not signed up for our quarterly craft kit, do not miss out. I know we don't have that many. Um, we are going to close it um, by April 15th or when we hit 200. And I really think that we may hit 200 uh, before we hit April 15th. So Caitlin's going to drop the link to these. If you are not watching and don't see the link live, just go to jamierayvintage.com in the search bubble, just search craft kit and it should pop up. Um, Trying to get inside this hole that I... See if there's any questions. There we go. Lisa says she's so excited for that. Me too. I We were debating on what our next quarterly craft kit would be. And when Zeb made his last horse and it sold so quickly, everybody was super excited. And I was like, you know what? Let's do that because people love it. It's an original design. Thank you, Caitlin. She just linked the craft kit so you guys can see that. Oh, yeah. The darker is better. So that's what we're doing there. We're just now it doesn't look like I just sanded it out in the garage. All right. Once I do this one, we'll let it. Do you want to get the heat gun to dry this so then we can seal it up with the oil? And it also gave it like some age, like older wood. It darkens up as it goes, especially if it's been handled around food with like oils and things. You Are both of you in the business full time? Yes. Seb quit his full time corporate job selling tires. Seven years ago. Seven on the years 24th ago. Fourth of this month. It's coming up seven years which means we're also getting closer to uh, 10 years. Um, do I have, do we do something for your 10 year? I think we need to. I've actually been, I've actually had my Facebook page for 10 years, which I feel like is pretty much official. Like when you like make it business. Facebook official on your business, then you're like really official. So I'm about 10 years in. Okay. Now I'm going to add the white to the hemp oil. Oh, Caitlin linked my shorts. Zeb's going to make that, but let me show you these shorts. Okay. They're biker shorts. So they're stretchy. But you guys, you guys, they have pockets on both sides and they're big pockets. I have the they're big, big enough to hold your phone. I have the big mama jamma, the biggest iPhone you can get. Cause I tried the small one didn't work for me and it fits my phone. And if you're like me and you're a little, 
you know, not model skinny, let's just put it that way. I love me a good biker short with a, with a larger, I'm wearing a large shirt with large biker shorts and it's comfortable. It's like wearing pajamas and they're knee length on me when I pull them down because I'm only 5'5". Five five. So if you're taller, they would be a little bit shorter, but anyways, ta-da. So I think I'm gonna do this one here, not cut because it's got some kerf marks in it still from the sawmill and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna let that ride. If we sell out on these, I will order more. So if you go to JRV more closet, the shorts. more shorts, yeah. <laughs> um, if you go to JRV closet, we actually have a bunch of new like yoga pants in and a new romper. So definitely check that out. I haven't had time to do a live to show them all off. So that here, let me give you like a visual on how big these are. Everlasting vintage, my jeans totally fit. They just barely fit around my neck and they just barely fit around my waist. So if you want a little looser fit, just get a little looser around the neck. So, I don't know that it works for everybody, but it, it, the trick worked for me on our last video. So if, you, if you're not like having to do a bunch of food prep and you just want to have a bowl of cereal with some strawberries, these are, that's the idea here. These are perfect size for that. Or, if, you, or if you've got like a spread of stuff and you've got several different things like little cheeses or something on there. To give you an idea of price, these will range anywhere from somewhere like 30-ish dollars to around um, $100 for the big mama jammas. All right, I'm gonna just do the dark on this one. Do you need me to help pull that through? Like uh, I did oh yeah, can you do that? Yep. You want me to just do this one? I was gonna not, cause it's got kerf marks from the, the sawmill still. Oh yeah, this probably so doesn't need chop marks. I was just gonna leave marks. that one, no, no chopping. <laughs> Leslie said, I've decided my yoga pants will be my painting clothes. Um, yes. The only way to work, especially when you're working from home, is in your pajamas. I had pajama pants that I did wood turning in, and they were like my special wood turning pajama pants because they were comfy. He wore them until they the got wood chips <laughs> all in them. <laughs> until the paint chips, there was like a paint chip layer in the fleece. He did get a bunch of, we do a lot of thrifting, so we buy a lot of our clothes secondhand too. He got a bunch of shorts at Savers, mm -hmm. and some of them are like sweatpant material. So I'm sure he's going to be frequenting those as well. He used to not wear sweatpants or joggers like forever. And I finally got him in some joggers. I don't know if it's like the middle age or what, but he's like, I love joggers. It's so comfy. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, uh, hey, did you answer the size question on biker shorts? Sorry, I missed the size question. So ask that again. To give you an idea on size. I'm a solid, I hate to say it, but I'm a solid 170 pounds. I am not skinny in the back. Uh, and I'm wearing a large and they fit me just fine. And I usually wear like a medium large when I'm at this weight. So that's the perfect size. It's the perfect size. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. And I'm five foot five, but I have longer legs. I'm a long leg five foot five and they fit me just above the knee. So thank you for sharing. They said, don't forget the end of the board on that one. Yeah, I got it. It's not because it's like end grain. It's not taking it as well. It's not absorbing down in. Are these food safe? Yes, Barbara, they are food safe because we're using um, Sweet Pickens milk paint and Sweet Pickens hemp oil. So that's our go-to for food safe. I like how dark this one got. I think it's going to look really good when you do the wash on it. Yeah. We got moto leggings and I'm sad the black ones only came in plus size, but there are some taupe ones. So I'm going to pick those up too. All right. Next is going to be the hemp oil, but it needs to dry. It's right here. Do you want oh, me to do another want, one? You want to just heat gun? Here, you can do this one. This one I uh, I did. You knifed it up. A, a second coat, I think. Oh yeah. I'll go grab the heat gun so we can dry these out. All right, thanks, sweetie. Big end of the board. Yeah, we already went around the edge of this. Oh, on the. Yeah, all the edges are done. All right, so this one here, you can see the kerf marks, which is just from the saw at the sawmill. And then it's got a few down here too. And on the ends, it's got a little. If you let the dry. milk paint dry a little in between, it also will get darker. Yeah, you can do multiple coats or you can add more milk paint in if you need to. There's a lot of, a lot of different ways you can do it. We actually have an edited video on doing this as well. So if you don't want to watch the live video, go on YouTube, search Jamie Ray Vintage Food Safe Paint. Or food safe stain, I think is what we called it. Because these, it's are, a these ones are just fun because they're like the England inspired ones. Yeah. I had to get my notebook out and 
and uh, see what I'd drawn. Oh, the recording, movie recording stopped. Can you? Oh, yeah. Fix that. Here's that one. Is it going again? Yep. I'll cover my face because usually if you cover your face, then it zooms in. I really like this one. Yeah, that one's a good shape, huh? Yeah. I'm going to need more. And then did you see on these, like normally I would have rounded this top completely up here, but I, I kind of pointed it. All right. Let me knife those while you dry these and then we'll okay. do the oil. So, so when you're doing your knife, pretend like you're cutting, like just go, cause your, your cuts on that are like a foot apart. I could put more cuts on it. You might need to, but just pretend like you're cutting a cucumber and just go. I'll do more cuts and the white can get down in them. Just look away, guys. This is not for kids. If kids are watching, don't do this at home. Especially whichever kid it is that keeps knifing my butcher block countertops. Nobody has fessed up to it. It might just be your dad. He's like, they're butcher block. I'm going to Yeah, on the edge. <laughs> So now that this is dry, this is going to be closer to the color that it's going to be. And then we'll put the white on there. Especially see those kerf marks on the end here on the sides. Renee, we had someone to do that at our house once, but he hasn't been on your at your house yet. I think it's a kid thing. I carved my name into my mom's underneath her side table, like growing up. <laughs> if you're gonna carve on stuff, don't put your name. It's like a clear giveaway. I'm not a very good. Uh... All right, I think that one's good. All right, this one is pretty well ready for some wash, and so is that other one. All right, I think that this is really the way to do it. Yeah, that's what, is that what you that's were what doing? I was saying. Yeah, like just use it. You can put good pressure on it, and then you get the knife cuts close. I wouldn't go too high. You, know, you don't really knife cut on the handle. Uh, I don't know. You knife cut everywhere <laughs> over a few hundred years. Mostly in the middle, though. So I was thinking it might be cool to, I did this with mostly like uh, hand tools and things, but I think it might also be cool to get my wood carving chisels out and like do some gouges. All right, is that one, that one's dry. Do you want to do, this one needs to be dried. It's almost all the way dry. I'm just going to do a light stand on it because when I hit it with the heat gun, it raised some wood fibers up. Seashell Vintage, the neck pant thing. I'll just tell you what it is, but you can also watch. We just put up a thrifting video from earlier in the week and I bought some jeans. You just take the jeans and you do them around your neck. And if they match up or slightly overlap, then they will fit your waist. That's the hack. Uh, it's not scientifically proven because I've only done it the one time, but it did work. So I shared that. Um, also, the reason she was having to do that is because the thrift store took all of their changing rooms out because of COVID. Yeah, thanks, And they're not putting them back in. Like, listen, savers. People are over it. I need to be able to try on my pants. I would have bought 10 pairs and I only bought like three and they actually were a little long. So while it worked this way, I have to cuff them. Okay. I need, this one's ready. Okay. This so one wanna... needs the white oil. This one needs the white oil. That yeah. one needs to dry. So that one's going over there. This we're almost so done. Now we got two more. I know, but we're doing good. Um, do you want me to put copper on any of these or should we save that for a different one? Um... I have that little copper strip that I can from the church that we could put somewhere like maybe down here on the end on the bottom. I think we need to do some like square ones and then just put it on four squares. Oh, on the corners. Mm -hmm. okay. Like that one I showed you. So, cause they, sometimes they put them like over the top and it's cutesy. You want to put them on the side. So they're still functional. Uh huh. So what we'll do. So, and this is, this is like easy guys. I'm just going to cut it in a strip wide enough to fit on here, bend it over. And then we'll put like two nails here, we can two do... nails here. 
You want me to do that now? Yeah, let's do it on one of these. Okay, let that me, one. I gotta go get it. It has to be a square edge. So this one, do you want me to go ahead and brown this one so you can do that? All right, um, hold, yeah, hold me, on. I was gonna do white, but I'm gonna do brown on this one so that way Zeb can. Let me scribe this one so I know. Okay. And I'll cut it a little smaller than that. Okay. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go do We're some back. cutting. You know, that's what live creating is all about, just doing things in the moment. This is actually like a real life application of what we do <laughs> when we're creating off camera, which doesn't happen very often because we're pretty much always on camera. But. So once you get a hemp board like this, you do not want to wash in your dishwasher. I would think most people would know that, but I feel like it's important to say. Um, and then you want to use hemp oil every so often to re-season and protect your board. You could also use, if you didn't have hemp oil and you got one of these from us, you could also use like a food oil to keep them oiled up. And I do that to my boards every so often just to keep them from like splitting or whatever. All right. This one... It's done. And the, the knife marks aren't like super crazy, but it, it's good. It's very, very good. And as you use it, it's going to get knife marks. And I like this one because it has a little bit of a raw edge that's not perfect. Grapeseed oil. Uh, yeah, I bet that would work too. Thank you, Caitlin. She just dropped the link to the bio certified food safe. Thank you for giving us a thumbs up. Bass, base, base, bass, base, wife. I always say the wrong thing. It's not bass like this. It's bass like guitar. Sorry. I don't know if you guys know this, but I have adult ADD. You probably have realized that by now. So if I ever get a little bit crazy or lose my train of thought in a live video, just know that I'm trying. Okay, that's ready for Zeb. Now I can go back to this project. So these are the ones that we did just water and watered down milk paint and we got the stain on them and i'm going to use white hemp oil to kind of give them an oxidized look um, amy says what's going on with the church demolition we are finishing up demo because hvac is going in next week we have two units going in oh that's a lot of milk paint all right so this is just milk paint with oil wax and I'm using it to oxidize the board but also to seal it because a lot of the older boards have that and you can do one coat of this and then do some more just hemp oil which is probably what I'm going to do oh, man. <laughs> I, I went knuckle deep into this wash hair That's cool, huh? The white, yeah, looks good. Yeah, down into the, this would not be as cool without the cut marks, I don't think. All right, now, so I just cut them into two little strips. I thought I had some tin strips, but then I remembered I had those over at the church. So I just used my angle grinder to cut them down. All right, and this is ready to go. We can white oil wax after you put those on. I'm just gonna do, I got a smooth. It's not white oil out. wax, white hemp oil, sorry. It feels like white oil wax. Yeah, it feels Same like it, but it's wax. food safe. So like if you buy the hemp oil and you want to make different color waxes, all you have to do is add the milk paint to it. So buy one thing, a big thing of hemp oil, and then buy a sample of suitcase, zinc, and flour sack. And you can make gray, brown, and white hemp oil that's food safe colored waxes. You could also buy the lantern, which is the black, if you wanted to make a black hemp oil. So keep that in mind. And that actually also works for the oil wax too. You could do the same thing. If you wanted a bunch, but didn't want to buy a bunch of different kinds, just buy the milk paint and you can make anything you want. Okay. okay I'm going to do another. I'm just getting these edges so they're not sharp. Yeah, we don't want to cut anybody. Eliza got cut this morning doing the dishes. I had to Oh really? Yeah, I had to get a band-aid out. So I'm gonna use hemp oil. That girl's been hurting herself a lot lately. To kind of pull back some of the white and also to make sure this is really well sealed. Because it will soak it up. 
And I'll probably come back in a couple hours and do another coat of hemp oil. This is really cool. We've never done the white over the top and I'm thinking it's money. It does give it that oxidized, got used for a long time and then sat look. All right, I'm gonna bring this up close. Comment, what do you guys think? I think it's a winner. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. All right, this one's done, except for maybe some more hemp oil, so it's gonna hang out over here. Okay. I'm gonna wipe this the opposite direction. The so nice it's not thing streaky. about using this copper pipe is it's pretty thin and soft, so I can bend it pretty easily just by hand here. I'm going to leave that on. Um, Caitlin, for the stain, I've been using Sweet Pickens Suitcase. We have zinc, which we haven't mixed up yet, and then flour sack. So we did just water and then the milk paint for the base coat, and then hemp oil and flour sack for the top coat. Jody says, beautiful winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> All right. Okay, I don't have a Veronica point. says many people seek out ADD people because they think outside the box. <laughs> well, that's a nice way to put it. I, I like that one. Uh -oh. I have to tell I'm gonna have to go get a punch. That bent my nail. <laughs> I have to tell all of my new employees I have ADD. Mariah calls me a tiny tornado, which is not inaccurate. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna spout off a million things. It doesn't mean you have to do them all today. I'm just telling you before it falls out of my brain because that happens. Sometimes people make a list when I talk. It works. Okay, I'm gonna do this This one. We did no cuts, just have the kerf marks from the sawmill. This is the poplar. I'm gonna put the white on this one. Which one is just the, yeah, this is the white one, this is plain. Caitlin says, that would be me. She makes a bunch of lists, yes. And sometimes I have to tell Caitlin, like, because I'll, like, spew off a bunch of stuff all at once. I'm like, not urgent. Not urgent. Just whenever. Like a running list of things. So in the past, we've also used metal like this. We had some, uh, some thin strip of metal that we used to repair a dough bowl that was split in half. Yeah, I like the copper piping though. I think we should buy some copper piping and. Well, I have a bunch. It's in the. I gotta like, get it once out Once we of the use this space. all up, yeah, because we're redoing plumbing. Once we run through all that, we'll just buy some new stuff, throw it outside with some vinegar on it, and let nature do its course. I was gonna punch it, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna drill it. I'm just gonna drill it. Poplar naturally ages white. That will be pretty. Yeah, it does. It does. It's like a. Like, especially if you leave it out in the sun. There we go, that's better. If you know a cabinet shop or any, like a custom woodworking shop, you could talk to them and tell them your dimensions and they might give you leftovers at a good price if you want to make your own. Yeah, a lot of them have scraps that they just throw out. Well, and a lot also, I've seen bundles and stuff. All right, hold on. You're going to Sorry. Talking, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can ever stop talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Silence is golden. All right. Thanks, Leon likes my shirt. Leslie shows she has this shirt. I'm not, we actually don't have any black sheep in our family. Except for our actual black sheep. And actually, I have to tell you, between a black sheep and a white sheep, the black sheep looks better more of the time because white sheep get very dirty. Just pro tip. All right, so I'm just using a little bit of just plain, okay, go. plain hemp oil to wipe the white back and really age this poplar. And this, again, we did not put cut marks in because I know not everybody wants them. And it's got just the natural kerf marks. And once these sit for a couple hours, I will do one more coat of hemp oil. So 
they're ready to mail out. So let me. So this is the poplar. I know we may not even bust into the zinc today. I'm loving just the suitcase and the white with the hemp oil. Sorry if that's super loud, guys. It's got to be done. Okay. It's part of work. Work is loud. So this is Poplar 2, yes? What? It's Poplar 2? Yeah, all of them are Poplar, and then the one big one is Pine. Okay, I just... 12 -inch it's one. crazy to me the difference so you can get, between Poplar. So some of our most popular cutting boards that we've ever sold were the Poplar that had... I forget what it's called. Um, it's like a special kind of uh, thing that happens to them, but they got dark and they had like this almost like marbling effect in the grain with like greens and a little bit of blues. I don't know. I don't remember what that's called, but it's like a special term for it. If you remember, chime in. I can only remember so many things in a day sometimes. If you ever have questions on an order, it's always good to email Caitlin info at jamierayvintage.com because sometimes people will comment on our videos and while we try to see every comment, things get lost and we never want things to get lost. Or if you're on Facebook, you can DM us and we can forward it to Caitlin or actually Caitlin checks in there. Email is the best way though, because Caitlin has a very organized She's, ticket, system, ticket system. And when you email her, it opens a ticket and it doesn't go away until she solves the problem. And Caitlin doesn't like to have open tickets. So she, she also wants... doesn't leave problems unsolved. Yeah. So it works <laughs> very good to get things happening. So info at jamierayvintage.com for all your questions, especially on orders. The gals at the shop who answer the phone don't know. We've had a few people call recently and they don't. Especially on shipping stuff. Yeah. They, sometimes they help ship, but they don't, they're not like They can direct you to the right place to get the answers you need. That, that is so stinking cool. This one I might just, be $125. I, I feel just like, like you gotta the copper, add extra that, for the copper. I mean, that's cool. We've got copper pipes probably put in when they started using copper for water. I like it. So that pipes are antique. They're, they're probably from the 50s. Okay, vintage. Is it called spalting? I don't oh, know. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, no. That's a little bit different, but I'll, I'll try to look it up because there's. Because it gets, it gets really dark and then it's got like almost like a green, like grain running through it. Okay, so okay, oh, I had a good question while Zeb's doing this that I wanted to answer because I have hand pain. I have arthritis, occasional numbing and neuropathy in my hands. Um, not eating inflammatory foods like sugar, carbs. So Zeb and I recently cut out processed sugar again, only natural sugars, um, and drinking lots of water. Carbonation is bad for your hands. So like joints. So if you have joint pain and you're drinking soda, even if it's diet, like don't do it. I love soda. So it's hard for me to say that. And then also my mom has been using, um, the just over the counter CBD oil, like cream that you can get without a prescription. And that's helped a lot. She has pretty bad arthritis. So hope, and they also make gloves like compression gloves that can help. So hopefully that helps you with your, um, so honey isn't inflammatory. All sugar is inflammatory. All sugar. I should clarify that. My body just processes natural sugars easier, and I'm also not willing to give up all things that taste good. <laughs> collagen helps with joint pain as well. That is also true. I try to drink collagen shake every day and eat food that has Are you, uh, collagen. Are you some white yep. on that one? Bone broth. We just bought some of that. That's supposed to be good. So hopefully that helped. Uh, the, Zeb is hysterical. What did you do that was funny while I was yakking? I don't know. He while you funny. were cutting on the knife, I was like, when you were cutting with the knife earlier. But oh, that is, know. Zeb is funny. Zeb and I make each other laugh a lot. That's how we work. Michelle says, thank you, full of our, I am full of arthritis. You're welcome, Michelle. As somebody who suffers as well and who crafts and uses my hands a lot, I totally get it. I actually have to be super careful, not so much with my hands anymore, but since doing all the shiplap, my elbows. So I can't let, oh, I'm pretty strong. I can lift things, but I can't let things hang on my elbows. 
So we have found some unique ways to move stuff, mostly involving Zeb lifts one end and I, we took this huge beam out, we should have filmed it. And I used the dolly on the back end to guide the beam out of the house because I could not let it hang. All right, let's get some white do we need to do flour some sack mixed with hemp oil. Let's get that on here too. Did we do this one at all? This one? No, I did not do that one, one or that one. This is my favorite. It's almost like, like a pizza board or whatever they call those. Zeb really wants a pizza oven. I do, but it's thick. Make sure that if you use water and milk paint in your base coat that it's dry all the way because water and oil don't mix. I probably don't need to tell you that, but I'm gonna, because it's something I would do. So this one only has like light knife marks in it, so it's not too bad. I don't even know if we cut it. Did you cut mm, that one? Yeah, I did, I can see them. So the board I showed you at the very first of the video, that sheep in the back, that one we oiled once and did kind of the coloration on it that it's got now. And you can see where it's starting to wear off where we've been cutting on it in the middle. We've only done that once. Like we never went back and re-oiled it. It's wood, you know, it you doesn't- can't, You should though treat them with hemp oil once they start to get dry. Yeah, but I, I feel like cutting boards, like if you let them dry out, it helps helps all that stuff that normally gets trapped in cutting boards like wood cutting boards are amazing because they don't they're naturally like antimicrobial yeah like the plastic ones that you can get they get the cuts and then it doesn't dry out in there like the wood will so they they hold more things Since I'm new here, I don't know who Zeb is, nor what's your man partner's name. Zeb. So Zeb is my man partner. <laughs> He's my husband. We've been married 20 years. We have five beautiful children. Our oldest will be 20 this year, and our youngest is turning eight. And we have, we have eight full-grown chickens, 11 baby chicks, two baby doll sheep, two rescue pups, and my parents live with us. So you'll see us refer. When you break it down like that, it's, it makes me feel tired. Yeah, it is a little, it's a little much. We had 12 baby chicks, but one of them did not. He was left out of the fold and he got cold and he passed away. But that happens when you get animals, that happens, especially with chicks. So we'll, we'll show you guys some more of the chicks later because they're super cute. We, got, we have silky bantams, full-sized. They've stopped laying eggs. So they're just going to live on as non as cute as pets cute the, floppy pets shop. and we're going to move all of our pets except for the dogs are actually going to live at the church because harrington so once is we in get up and running you guys will be able to come by and see han and chewy which are our sheep and all the chickens and probably occasionally the dogs will be there yep the new americana chickens are um they're going to be full-sized and they'll they're called easter eggers they lay all different colors blue and green eggs they're really sweet birds and they're very hardy and super tough. They can withstand really cold temperatures and they're just fine. They love it because they get super fluffy. I'm glad that we did the white um, after because it kind of puddled up on the edge and looks good. Can so I'll show you guys close? what I mean. Yeah. So this one is probably gonna be like around $124 because it's bigger and it's poplar and it also has the copper which is like jewelry for your cutting board. I'm gonna and do I that give a you guys lot, price really range because like I know that. a lot of you guys are makers. So I wanna let you know, if you just look up European cutting boards, they, I actually found one that was square today with copper on the edge and it was $200. That give you an idea of value. Okay, this one's done. Okay. There you go. Jody says, people. love my Easter acres. Yeah, we've had Americanas before. They're super friendly. Um, and our chicken, our other chickens are friendly too. Are you going to do more? Okay. We're hoping to make the shop not just a place where people can come, the church, that will be our shop, not just a place people can come and shop, but also just kind of have like an experience. So that's why the sheep are going to be there and the chickens that we're growing a working garden on the side because all the windows open up to that. We actually are starting 720 plants. 
They're all planted. In, They're all planted. Well, we've got 72 left. I'm oh. waiting for my strawberry seeds to come in. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying lavender, just using lavender seed from my old plant. So I don't know if that will work. I'm starting to get low. Do you need more white? Yeah. Socialized chickens are cool. Yeah. Our chickens are definitely socialized. They live with our sheep because chickens eat things that are bad for they, the sheep. They, they help. Uh, they basically, long story short, here's some farm some Here's farm some farm stuff, knowledge. Some farm knowledge for you. Uh, the chickens go through the sheep's poop and any parasites or anything that get in there after the sheep poop it out, they get rid of that. And so it helps keep the sheep really healthy. Yeah, it's like a, a natural way to keep your sheep parasite free. Doesn't mean it, they never get them, but it keeps it down. So same thing with our garden. We're going to plant a bunch of flowers in it to invite bees and wasps so and they can eat Before you feel aphids. grossed out by that, just know that that's been happening for thousands of years. What? Chickens eating sheep food? Chickens eating whatever, whatever they can get their hands on. Chickens are omnivores and they will eat everything. <laughs> they don't really necessarily like lettuce though. Yeah. At least ours have it. The bigger dimension wood ups the price of the boards. Cause if you ever try to get larger dimension boards, that's not like builder grade, like not, I don't want to say dumb, but like the stuff from Home Depot that's all warped and gross. That's not the type of wood so that you, you would use. So you can glue them together. Yeah, you can, but, it, but then that's more expense because that's more time too. Yeah. Which if you get one of our sheep cutting boards to get them to fit and cut out the sheep, those are glued up. That's awesome. Kathy said that her dad made her a cutting board when she was 13. Nice. Those are fun. The only thing my dad ever gave me was all the cut ends for blocks from the building <laughs> site. <laughs> my dad was a contractor, a general contractor. Yeah, all right, I'm going to show you guys. This one is awesome because it has a bunch of like natural pitting to it. We haven't, one of my favorite ones has been hiding over there the whole time. No, we're getting there. All right. Uh, Zeb, did Zeb, if you guys are just tuning in, I'm going to show you when we were in England. Zeb, my fingers are dirty. Is that going to irritate you? Yeah. Okay. I won't irritate me. Just um. He's going to show you his designs. He <laughs> Mine are dirty, too. And we couldn't afford all the cutting boards they have, so he just drew them. So I, I took a bunch of notes in England before I forgot uh, and and about dimensions and shapes and things like that. And so I kind of inspired Is there emergency? Kind of are you just saying us. hi? Five, ten. Um, we have... About 10 more minutes. That's my dad. When I listed that long list of things, my parents live with us. My 20 year old doesn't live with us, but he, well, almost 20 year old, doesn't live with us, he's but he's close. <laughs> he's close because he's at the church and he eats here a lot. Actually, he got himself a second job. He was already What's working 50, 60 hours a week. Big ones. They are, this big, big one with the copper is. 25 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. And then Zeb's is. This is going to be 11. 28 and a quarter. 28 to the handle. So 20 inches of working space. 28 and a quarter by about 11 inches wide. Kai says he eats there for sure. Yeah. My mother in law is like, um, I've never seen more people be fed in one place than at your we house. We feed the neighborhood. We have a pool, so you know kids are over all the time, and snack time happens. And my uh, my brother's boys, they come over after school. Before Mariah, school, Mariah's Ty and Mariah's boys, and they come over after and before school. And you know, second breakfast happens, snack time. You know, so it's fine. We're glad to do it. Um, if them. you buy a cutting board yeah. at Hobby Lobby, I don't know how they make them. I mean, honestly. Most products aren't necessarily deemed food safe, but they're able to use them. I don't know how they get away with that, but I can tell you right now, like if something is super, super shiny, it's probably not food safe until it dries all Well, the here's the thing. Think, think about it this way. Your table is probably like a lacquer or epoxy on the top or some sort of polyurethane or polyacrylic on your tabletop finish. And that's, that's very common worldwide. Um, and I can those also, are not food safe before they cure. I can also tell you that places like Hobby Lobby, their stuff is made in China and Indonesia. Not bagging it because we have stuff made from all over the world, but 
it's not made in the USA, so it is what it is. Look at what the the milk paint and the oil, the hemp oil, did to this plain old that's good pine board. So pine was not; it was kind of orangey, but now adding that white hemp oil really did help tone it back. This one, oh, we're we're over an hour. Yeah, but we were late. This one might be one of my favorites. You can see, I, I talked about it earlier. I didn't quite round the handle. I left it kind of pointed and I really like that. I'm gonna dry this real quick so we can hemp oil it. We do have one more, maybe when we're not live, you can cut it and I'll finish it and then we'll get them all listed. Yeah, I have, this is how they started this morning. These are just a little short to cut two sheath out. And show them on the other side. That one has a big knot, so. And the knot in the middle. We don't on the sheet. We don't we don't send that out. But on this, it'll be perfect. Well, that's like right where well, the bum really would be, so it'd be board. like Look a sheet bum hole. Yeah, this is really pretty though. Look <laughs> at that wood grain on this one. So this is what all these were, and some of them were smaller. Like yeah, you some know, were we got skinnier. lots of little scrap ends and things. Oh, finish your story. What story were you talking about? I don't know. Before you were talking about the hole in the wood. I don't remember now. Uh, shoot. Must not have been important. Are all the boards pine? No. So we only have, they're all poplar except one. for this one is pine. And these, the pine is a smaller dimension. It's three quarter. The it's... poplar is from a specialty lumber store. So it's thicker. It's like it's, uh, it's full dimension. It's full quarter dimension is what they call it because it hasn't been planed down all of your lumber before, you know, they, they cut it oversized and then they run it through a planer. And that's how you get two by fours that are three and a half by one and a half inches because they plane everything so that everything is the same size. They run it through a machine and this is pre machine. Northern white pine. What kind of pine is it? Um, so this, this is probably just Douglas fir. It's what we have a lot of out West, um, that, or it might, it might be a white pine, like a, like a fir. I really want to get this down into the cracks on this. I don't pine. know. It's common pine from home Depot is what it is. And then here, I like this one. Cause this is like an easy to get a hold of cutting board. This, this one can could be a, the, like a singular charcuterie board or yep. a date night one. All right. I think that's it. That's it. Let's grab all the cutting boards so we can show them for you. Okay. Yeah. So Harrington, they're asking what he does. He works driving trucks. Oh, that for, was my uh, story. Yeah. He's got a second job now and he, uh, he's working nights and early mornings and weekends at a, uh, uh, elderly care facility. And they have 39 people there that he's helping care for. And he did that while he was, in Nebraska going to college he did he did that for work and he loved it and so he's he's seeking it out again we we're trying to get him to go to school for to, to get you know some nursing degree so that he can keep pursuing that but we'll see what he does <laughs> he does what he you know wants. gentle nudges right this is exactly like one of the cutting boards that we had at the cottage in England yeah and we sold one that was real similar to that too yep we, we found one that was like a dollar at a boot sale and then this uh, is the, a pound. the pine one. And pine is actually really common in European cutting boards, yep. the thinner ones. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. There go the dogs. Uh, Rex and Cody are saying hi. Um, and if you want to support our channel, you can share this video out, comment, like it, visit jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products we use today. And if you're wanting one of these boards, give me about half an hour, 45 minutes. I will get them listed up on the website as well. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Thanks, partner Zeb. All right, you got to hit the end. <laughs> <laughs> if I can end the broadcast.